Welcome back to 1834 Chess Friends. Lobordnay won match three, so he's leading two matches to one. And this is the first game of the fourth match, which will consist of 11 games, not including draws. So the first to win six will take the match. We have a new guest commentator. He is late to the battle because he needed to finish his game of bowls first. It is, of course, English hero Sir Francis Drake. Let's begin. McDonald opens with e4. We have e5 in response from Laborde, and of course we expect McDonald to push f4, hoping for a king's gambit. But instead, he does something completely unexpected. He plays bishop to c4 instead, and this is a move we've not seen before in this series, so very exciting. And Laborde plays bishop to c5 in response. We have c3, queen to e7, and now knight to f3 from McDonald. D6 from Laborde and castles from McDonald. Lebordnay here tucks his bishop back uh, to b6, and we have d4 in the center from McDonald. Knight to f6, and this is attacking this undefended pawn, but McDonald ignores it and plays knight to a3. Now, Lebordnay doesn't really want to capture this pawn here because he's still got a lot of undeveloped pieces and it would uh, open up some attacks from the rook uh, along the center file here. So instead of capturing this, he plays bishop to g4 and pins the knight against the queen. Now here, Sir Francis Drake suggests that the Irish and the French should join forces with the English and attack the Spanish. But failing that, h3 to chase away the Catholic bishop would be good. Uh, however, MacDonald is still upset with Sir Francis Drake for helping massacre his Irish ancestors in 1575, so he ignores him and plays his knight to c2, uh, moving his knight a second time. Now here, Le Bourdonnais, uh, a good move for him might be to capture the pawn in the centre, but instead he continues his development with his knight. Now we have queen to d3, finally defending this central pawn, and um, maybe castling would be good for Le Bourdonnais here, but instead he plays d5, and suddenly the game has become quite sharp. MacDonald captures the d-pawn with his e-pawn, and here Le Bourdonnais is going to have to be very careful not to lose his queen, because if, for example, he captures with the pawn, simply rook to e1 will pin the queen against the king, and there's not really anything that Le Bourdonnais can do about it. He'll just lose his queen. So what does he play instead of this uh, pawn capture move? Well, he advances it to e4, defended by the knight. It, <laughs> it forks the white knight and the white queen. So MacDonald needs to save his queen. He retreats to d2 and gives up a whole knight. So McDonald has given up a whole knight, but he still has the threat against the queen when he plays rook to e1. In fact, Sir Francis says that McDonald still has the advantage here, actually, despite being the whole knight down. So Le Bourdonnais blocks the attack by advancing his knight, which also threatens the white queen. So the white queen moves up to f4. And yes, the game is getting a little bit wild here. This attacks the knight and the bishop. So Le Bourdonnais defends by advancing his f-pawn. This is defended by the bishop, but the pawn also defends the bishop and the knight back. MacDonald captures the pawn on f3 here, which forks these two pieces again. But... Le Bourdonnais kind of ignores this attack and attacks the queen with his g-pawn. And here Sir Francis says that MacDonald's best move would be to capture the bishop with the queen, because after the pawn captures the queen, the rook can capture the knight, pawn captures pawn, rook captures the pinned queen, the king captures the rook back. After all is said and done, MacDonald is up a whole Catholic bishop and one pawn and will certainly take home the Spanish gold. However, MacDonald reminds him that Le Bourdonnais is actually French and not Spanish, and instead of capturing the bishop, he plays queen to e3. Now Le Bourdonnais plays knight to e5. Uh, perhaps he's thinking here of a bishop exchange. If the white pawn captures the black bishop, the knight will capture the white bishop. But before any of that can happen, MacDonald plays his bishop to b5 with check, and Le Bourdonnais blocks it. And from here we have something of a complicated exchange fest, and it kicks off with MacDonald capturing the bishop with the pawn. Instead of capturing the white bishop with the pawn here, Le Bourdonnais first captures the pawn with the knight, which threatens the queen. So the queen backs off to e2, and Le Bourdonnais captures the bishop. Here, MacDonald advances his f-pawn and forks these two knights. So uh, Le Bourdonnais is going to have to save one of them. He chooses the g knight, and the pawn captures the e knight, which is swiftly replaced by the knight that just came over from uh, the g-file. And we continue with queen captures the b pawn with check. Le Bourdonnais interposes his queen and we have a queen exchange on d7. 
and at this point the game is quite even again. McDonnell has an extra pawn, although it's awkwardly doubled in the centre. Uh, Le Bourdonnais has a pawn majority on the king side, which he's going to start pushing, and McDonnell has a pawn majority on the queen side, which he's also going to start pushing. So we're going to be in for a bit of a pawn race. McDonald kicks us off with c4, and Le Bourdonnais brings one of his rooks across to help defend the knight, which frees up this pawn from defensive duties it could now advance. In the meantime, McDonald advances his c pawn again, attacks the bishop, so the bishop retreats, but McDonald keeps coming, d6. And as I said, this pawn is now free to advance because the knight's defended, and it comes to f4. We have b4 from McDonald, and uh, maybe he should have thought about bringing his rook across to help defend these pawns first, but he's gone for b4. We have rook on h to f8 from Le Bourdonnais, and now rook on f1, better late than never. Uh, Le Bourdonnais brings up his h pawn to h5, so he's really getting started now. We have knight to a3 from McDonald, bishop to f6, attacking the rearmost pawn here in the center, so McDonald defends it with his bishop, and Le Bourdonnais keeps pushing his pawns on the king side. Now this knight here is not doing very much on the rim, so McDonald heads it towards the center, knight to c4, he's coming towards this square to try to cause some trouble, but Le Bourdonnais keeps pushing his f-pawns. And the knight comes to the center, as we said, this is check, and Le Bourdonnais simply captures it with a bishop, McDonald captures it back with a pawn, and now he's undoubled in the center. So these pawns are both passed here, and they're looking quite mean, but is Le Bourdonnais worried about it? Nope, he just keeps coming. He pushes h4. We have rook on a to d1, getting in behind the most advanced pawn and x-raying the king. So that's also looking mean. But again, is Le Bourdonnais worried? No, he just pushes f2, which comes with check. So the king moves aside and we have h3 from Le Bourdonnais now. McDonald plays his rook to d3, hoping to slow the pawns down from the side, and Sir Francis says that maybe the French should send in some fire ships to f4 and f8 and really pile upon the pressure on the Spanish king's armada. But Le Bourdonnais reminds him that McDonald is Irish and this is not a sea battle, and instead plays his rook to g8. But this would allow McDonald some chances if he should spot the move rook to e3, because after the pawn advances now, although McDonald can't capture the knight because of the advancing pawn's threatened fork, he can capture the pawn with the pawn, and after the knight captures it back, the rook captures the knight, the rook captures the rook, the rook captures the pawn, and McDonald isn't actually down all that much material. He's got a lot of pawns against Le Bourdonnais 3, and he's got a bishop for a rook. He's significantly slowed down Le Bourdonnais and will stand some chances. But instead of spotting this um, rook to e3 move, he plays b5 instead and the chance is lost. Of course, Le Bourdonnais advances his pawn another square to g3. McDonald captures it with the h pawn and the black rook captures it back. This is attacking the white rook or alternatively offering a rook exchange on g3. McDonald doesn't accept, he goes to d4 instead and attacks the knight. Now, h2 here would win the game for Le Bourdonnais as one of the two pawns will be short a queen. But instead, he plays his rook on e to g8, which is a massive blunder and allows McDonald a winning chance, should he spot it. First, he moves his pawn up to e6 with check, and uh, Le Bourdonnais doesn't capture it here because he wants to keep the king in front of the pawns to stop them queening. Uh, if he captures here, the rook is capturing the knight with check, and it's looking a bit ominous for Le Bourdonnais. So instead, he backs off his king to d8, and... Here, it looks like the knight is open to be taken, and it seems that McDonald doesn't want to capture it because he is afraid of the power of the black rooks and the pawns uh, coming down the king side here. So he moves his rook back to try to help defend, rook to d1. However, the winning move that McDonald just missed was to capture the knight instead of defending with the rook rather ineffectually. Because after the rooks come in uh, to give a check, you don't actually need to capture with the white rook and give up checkmate to the queening pawn. You have the opportunity of moving the king aside. Then after the rook captures the rook, for example, you have enough time to start attacking the black king. So the king moves aside. You're going to have to keep an eye on the pawn. The rook's going to have to move aside to try to let the, <laughs> the queening pawn across and you're just going to start checking the king again. Let's check again. You're going to exchange some pawns here, and let's check again. And you can see the tide has turned in favor of McDonald, and he's going to win this game. But as I said, he decided to try to defend rather ineffectually and missed the chance to capture the knight. So he brought the rook down to d1 here. Le Bourdonnais pushes his h-pawn again, and McDonald doesn't want to capture it with the king here because it'll probably expose it too much to attacks from the rooks. 
Uh, instead, he goes e7 with check on the black king, which advances to d7. And here, MacDonald just basically gives up a pawn for nothing. He pushes c6 with check, captures, captures again with check, and the king captures the c6 pawn. And basically, MacDonald is pretty much out of options here. He's just moving for the sake of it. He gives up another pawn by queening it to the rook. Uh, maybe you should just resign now, MacDonald. But no, MacDonald decides to keep going. He captures the h-pawn after all, and the e-rook comes down to pin the white pawn. This d-rook comes across, gives a check, so the black king moves to b4. We have a4 from MacDonald giving another check, but the king just goes to b4. We have bishop to c3 from MacDonald, and the rook captures the bishop, a little bit of a capture fest here. We have the rook captures the rook, and the king captures the rook. MacDonald pushes his pawn to d7, but it's obviously far too little, far too late. Labordne is easily on time to get behind it with his rook, and MacDonald just gives up on this pawn now. He moves his king over to g2, hoping to slow down the black pawn. Of course, the rook captures the white pawn, and what can MacDonald do? Well, he goes for a check on c1, so the king moves to d3, and MacDonald is able to get his king in front of the black pawn. However, Labordne simply moves king to e3, and this causes MacDonald to resign the game, and Labordne wins the first game of the fourth match. So why did MacDonald resign? Well, he's run out of moves. Anything that he does is going to be met with something like knight to d2 with check. The king has to move aside, and this pawn is queening. You're going to have to give up the rook for the queen and the knight, and you can see Labordne has just completely won. So well done to him, going up 1-0 in his fourth match. Well done to both players for such a great game, very wild. Uh, Sir Francis has got one thing left to say to try to console McDonald. Have you seen these? They're called potatoes. But McDonald's not very happy with that. He is Irish. See you again next time.